Making videos about your dive could result in amazing footage to show everybody your experience in the cave. However, the process of making videos during diving can also easily carry away your attention on the dive itself, which is very important for technical diving like cave diving. It can lead to grave mistakes, as we will see in today's video. On November 14, 2018, at about 10.30 a.m., a team of two German divers reported as Team 1 entered Cenote Kalimba, where they met three other teams reported as Teams 2, 3, and 4, who wanted to dive into the same site. Cenote Kalimba is part of the Sistema Sakaktun, a cave system in Mexico which was ranked as the longest underground river and the second largest cave in the world. It's a very popular cave system in Mexico. The length of Sistema Sakaktun Cave is about 229 miles, and it has the maximum depth of about 394 feet. The cave system flows into the Caribbean Sea. Sistema Sakatun has hundreds of cenotes that make up the whole cave system. Among the several cenotes that make up the Sistema Sakatun is Cenote Kalimba. It's located on the way to Coba and about 8 kilometers from Tulum. The cave is not too deep, with an average depth of about 33 feet. According to Mexican standards, Cenote Kalimba has a moderate flow. It flows towards the southeastern region into Gran Cenote. Both the German divers of Team 1 were quite experienced cave divers. One of them received his full cave diving certificate in 2012. He had been to Mexico several times to dive. He had about 150 to 200 dives of cave experience. The second diver in Team 1 also received a full cave diving certificate in 2015, although this was his second trip to Mexico. Team 2 and 3 planned their dive towards Box Chen. That meant when they got to the T-junction, which is just a few minutes of diving into the cave, they would take the left turn, and their first jump would be to the left side. Team 4, on the other hand, planned to do the bypass towards Cenote Pabalani. They would jump to the right when they go beyond the BOA restriction, and also turn right when they get to the T-junction. The dive plan and cause of the incident of Team 1 will be discussed later in full detail. They started their dive with each team following their dive plan. Team 1 entered the cave system and clipped their stage tank on a line at the left side at about 15 minutes dive time. A stage tank is an extension tank used by divers during their exit. So Team 1 left their stage for use during their exit. After about an hour that Team 1 went into the cave system, Team 2 started their dive. While Team 2 was diving, they saw the stage tanks which Team 1 had clipped on the line. They also saw the cookies that marked the exit to Kalimba at the first T-junction. They left the spot and continued their journey towards Box Chen. But they noticed that there were no other markers or any jumps installed. Team 2 finished their dive and surfaced, but discovered that Team 1 had not surfaced at Kalimba as it was planned. One member of Team 2 went to check for them at Grand Cenote, thinking that perhaps they'd changed their dive plan to exit at an entrance other than Kalimba. When he got to Grand Cenote, he couldn't find the Team 1 divers, so he returned to Kalimba. They might have surfaced there in the meantime, as they were possibly initially delayed. When he got back to the Cenote Kalimba, he discovered that the situation was still the same. At that point, he knew something had gone wrong. He rushed down to a local dive shop to inform them that there were two missing divers in the cave system. It was now 2.30 p.m., about four hours after Team 1 had started their dive, which raised the alarm that they were missing divers. Jeff Clark, a diver who was at the local shop, was the first to arrive at Kalimba to confirm the news he heard. After confirming the news, he went to call on other divers. Fortunately, he was able to find Kim Davidson and Johan Isaacson, who came with their dive gear from Mayan Blue, another cenote in Tulum. The divers, Jeff, Kim, Johan, and Paul, and other locals who gathered at the site, already knew that the case would be a body recovery if the missing divers had not surfaced at another cenote. 
Robbie Schmidtner walked down to four different cenotes to confirm if they had surfaced in any of them. He went to Pabalani, Box Chen, O'Toole, and Grand Cenote. At all these four cenotes together with Kalimba, they were not found. While Robbie went, they made arrangements for the search to begin. The four divers separated themselves into two teams. Johan and Kim were in search team A, and Jeff and Pal were in search team B. The two teams were ready to begin the search, but had a little challenge due to the fact that they didn't know the dive plan of the missing divers. Fortunately, the other three teams that were with them in the morning knew that the lithium sunset section of the cave was part of their dive plan, and coupled with the fact that Team 4 met the first T-junction marked, though there were no other markers on the way to the right side where Team 4 dived. These reports became the guide for the search divers to work with. Search Team A was tasked with searching the main line towards Grand Cenote for any jumps that might be present. If they couldn't see any sign that they were there, they would search through Grand Cenote and Hotul. Search Team B would go right at the T-junction and dive to the Lithium Sunset section, where they assumed that the missing divers planned their dive. So from the Lithium Sunset section, they would dive till they got to the main line that was coming from the left side of the T-junction. At about 5.30 p.m., Search Team A entered the cave, and after about 15 minutes, Search Team B also entered. Just 15 minutes into the dive, they found the missing divers' stage tanks clipped to the main line. They continued the dive plan, and at the T-junction, they found one of the missing divers' cookies, marking the exit side towards Kalimba. At the T-junction, Search Team A went left, going towards the main line. They got to the circuit, the Much's Maze, and the Lithium Sunset section, but no markers were found. They continued diving and searching. Close to the guideline, they saw one of the missing divers' portable lights on the cave floor. This was a sign that the missing divers could probably be seen along this path. When Search Team A got to the jump at Paso del Agarto, which was about 50 minutes into the dive, they found the body of one of the missing divers. He was found between Kalimba and Gran Cenote main lines. He was going towards the Gran Cenote main line. The two main lines were not connected by any installed jump, so Search Team A connected the jump to continue diving towards Cenote Hotul. They were going towards Cenote Hotul because they found a double arrow that marked the way to the closest exit. The body of the second missing diver was found between Grand Cenote Main Line and the Kuzan Na section. That was about 55 minutes of dive time. Search Team A confirmed the death and location of these two missing divers. Having found the body of the two missing divers, Search Team A exited the cave through Cenote Kalimba because they only intended searching for the bodies. The recovery was to take place the following morning. They met with the authorities that were already waiting for them at the surface to plan for the recovery of the two bodies. Search Team A spent about two hours in the search operation. The following morning, the recovery operation for the bodies of the two divers was completed. A team of three divers entered the water through Cenote Hotul to recover these bodies, and in less than an hour, they brought the bodies to the surface. The recovery had no complications and proper documentation was made by the recovery team. The two missing divers took a camera when they were going into the cave. They intended to take the records of their dive with the camera. From the video they had shot, the dive plan and activities of these two divers were discovered. The two divers had entered through Kalimba. They planned a single stage video dive. They filmed all the activities going on throughout their dive. Both divers were alternating between the roles of cameraman and subject. They filmed some short videos of the passages they passed through. The video showed that the two divers dropped their stage tank on the main line along the first T-junction. From the video, it shows that they spent 28 minutes to get to the place where they clipped their stage tanks, instead of spending about 15 to 20 minutes at normal dive pace. This delay in pace could have been because of their videography activities. Using cameras during dives normally affects a lot of things, including dive pace. They continued into the cave through Kalimba's main line till they got to the first T-junction, where they clipped the markers found when Team 4 was returning. They went to the Box Chen jump into Paso de Lagarto. From that point, they made a jump and then continued left to Much's Maze. 
the line they were following ended with another jump. From there, they went back to the Paso de Legarto line. They turned their dive close to the gap from Paso de Legarto to the Gran Cenote main line. When their equipment was analyzed, there was no signs of malfunctioning from the equipment. The cause of the accident couldn't be figured out from their diving equipment. The regulators and tanks were functioning properly when they were tested after the incident. They were both with their line markers, safety equipment like wet notes, line cutters, and backup lights, among others. After all, they were both experienced and certified divers, so they knew the necessary equipment to go in with. From their recovered wet notes, there were some messages written in German that revealed their intended destination. What brought about these divers' deaths became matters of contemplation. The navigational error that was initially reported as the cause was ruled out based on the messages discovered in their wet notes, and their dive log confirmed their total dive time too. Their equipment did not appear to be malfunctioning, so that was also ruled out. It could have been that they both consciously changed their exit towards Gran Cenote. This was evident from the time between the last recorded video and the time they died. The passage of time was too short for any navigational error to occur. The fatalities could have been the result of their failure to obey proper gas planning. Videography could have also contributed to their accident. Their attention might have been carried away by the video so much that they didn't even know they were running out of air. The time they discovered they were low on air was too late for them to hold on towards their planned exit where they had their stage tanks. And due to this, they sought out the nearest exit. However, they were not able to make it to the exit and they both drowned. We would like to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching, take a dive on the like and subscribe buttons and hit the bell icon so you get notified when we come back with another exciting cave diving story.